who and get to there. Did I share my screen yet? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. And um, now I did, right? Yep. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. And that. Okay. And that. Okay. So I don't have here. I've got your crit reply to look at, but I don't have it. Not a project update or anything, right? And same with you, James, right? No project update. Okay. That's fine. I just want to make sure I didn't miss it. You didn't submit it, right? Or you did? I sent it to you in your email. I just got to submit it onto the form. You know how I am. It's like I'm so organized. If it's not on the form, it doesn't exist. Well, the form won't let me paste, put in all the comments. I would... No, it's 140 character limit. Yeah. You get it? <laughs> it's like, one of these days, one of these days, I'm just going to read that in to, to um, you know, Tiddlers. So, so what are you doing these days, Kara? And you're huh? recording, right? You turned it off, James? What was that? You got your recording going? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what are you doing, Kara? I'm just still working with the spreadsheet and exporting and importing CSVs into TiddlyWikis. Yeah. Is that okay? Is that working? Or is it like frustrating or what? It's working. Um, so far, um, Imagining the Tiddly Wiki while it's a spreadsheet doesn't come naturally to me, so... Uh, Imagining the Tiddly Wiki as a spreadsheet? Well, building the Tiddly Wiki in a spreadsheet. Oh, it doesn't, see, if it doesn't come naturally, you shouldn't do it. So, like, why doesn't it come naturally? Well, that's, you know. that's just how I've been for a long time. I, I like to build things um, kind of on the fly and learn about them as I build them. Mm -hmm. I was... So do you like have a visual sort of vis like something visual in your head or you just you have no idea where it's heading and you just want to let it run? Yeah, I am. I, um, I have next to no idea. Mm -hmm. like, I, have, I have a few ideas, but not that much. And then I just like to play with it and see how it turns out. And I, I get ideas as I go. Yeah. So that's cool. Um, and this is for the 9-11? Yeah. So, um, so what, so maybe what you could do, let me, I don't know if you got a chance to look at my little project that I made. This one, my project that is responsive to the templating assignment. I don't think I've seen that. Oh, I'm so proud of it. Like I did homework and I turned it in on time. Like, wow. So I built it, right? And it kind of models, it's a little over the top at some level, but it kind of models what a, net, what a submission could look like. Um, but then, so you can kind of read it quickly, but then it's like, you know, it just wasn't working. So I kept going. And so it gets sort of annoying because once you hand something in and you share a link, you want to keep it there. So I could move it, but anyway, it wasn't working. So then I moved it to Tiddly Spot and it works in Tiddly Spot. So, um, and I put in some directions. This is the first time I've done this in a little while, but you know, you guys can do this. So like, if you're thinking of, you want to bring someone in and you're building a demo basically, right? Cause it, nothing ever really works by the deadline. So you just have something that works. So you have to tell people what to do. And so this is the stuff that, you know, if I update it and change it, cause I keep going back, I'll put some updates in there. And I gave some instructions and I decided that I wanted this story view to be set to zoom in. Have you ever played with that? I haven't. I don't like it that much. Yeah. Don't. Um, it does different things, though. Um, so the zoom in is like sort of if you're if you wanted to imagine your tiddly wiki a little bit like an app on a phone. So you're just seeing one screen, and it's kind of weird. It's kind of like building a web page. You know, they're just pages, but they're tiddler. So, um, but if you want to think about that, it works. And then I have a start here. So you start here, and. Um, what I was thinking you could do is you could play with little sets of objects and 
that as you come across a text that you want to play with, you could mess with it and then go on to another text and mess with that. You know what I mean? And that's what I did here. I just had this, this text that I sort of wanted to mess around with. Um, and I built it out of a spreadsheet. Um, and then this is this like documentation kind of thing, which gets a little bit into the math. So you wouldn't mess. And I try to document some of my code and describe what it does. And, um, and then, but this is what I wanted to show you too. Um, so this spreadsheet, um, and I don't know if this is like when you say it doesn't, it's hard for you to model things in a spreadsheet because it doesn't come naturally. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, but here I was just decided I wanted to play with like a few words. So these little object tiddlers, um, I couldn't think of anything, but I came up with Grammy award winners. I don't know. I don't know much about Grammy awards. Do you, do you follow them? You, yeah. Okay. Whatever. So it's lost on you too, but I did some Wikipedia work and there's different genres. So you can win for jazz and rock and folk or pop. And you can win different awards, best album, best song, best performance, best artist, and maybe it comes in different years, 213, 214, 215, 216. So if you've got that sort of structure, so if you start with a structure and then you want to fill in tiddlers, you might look at it as a table, right? To so see how that sort of progresses. Does that make sense? You see, you said, James, this is like the opposite of what you're doing, right? Um, sort of. So, because you're starting with a thousand and you're like, you're starting at the bottom and building on top, and this is starting at the top and building a structure to house the things coming down. Correct. Um, Same concept, just different way of doing it. Yeah. Um, but then these, if you, you play around in here, these become names of tiddlers, and then this, this you can then begin to see tiddlers and generate them. But it's. For me, I'm kind of seeing, I'm seeing like this is the tiddler and this is the kind of tiddler it is and these are the tags it's going to have and then I'm beginning to play with a lot of fields and here you might want to play with this too. Um, so I could, like I'm going to tag it to jazz and album in the year, but I'm also going to create a field called genre and give it the value jazz and a field called award and give it the val value album in a field called year and give it the value 213. Because that way I can always ask a question about this object and I can say, oh, what year are you? You know what I mean? And it will respond on 213. But if it just tagged 213, I don't have any way to know that 213 is a year. So that's what the fields do. So if you want to think that way, you know, that's some, you might look at that in your, when you import them into your tiddlers, when you import the spreadsheet into your tiddlers through the CSV JSON, these just come in automatically as a ward and it gives it the value. So it's like it's kind of painless going in and when you have it, it's really nice. Um, and then you've been playing with filters too, right? You've been doing some filtering work here a little bit or not quite, not much, right? Not much. Okay. And James, you're doing some work with filters? I've got a gazillion filters and all sorts of crazy stuff in the background. Say that again? So I got like a lot of filters doing all sorts of crazy okay. stuff in the background. So what I did in this spreadsheet, and I, I don't know if this makes sense. I'm trying to, but it, it helped me visualize what the filters were doing and realize that I wanted a different filter for every object. Um, so I just built the filters in a spreadsheet and imported, imported the filters as values in a tiddler, and then I can call them in a template. So it's kind of a, so, cause I'm, you could probably do it in code by writing it, but I wasn't quite smart enough to figure it out. So if you can, so for me, what this does is the last one, well, I want that. So I can imagine that happening, but I can't write code, but I can write a teeny little bit of spreadsheet code and run it to TiddlyWiki. So for me, TiddlyWiki becomes like a um, prototyping environment. Right. So then if it ever works, then you can give it to a real programmer and they'll write the real code that will be much more efficient. But, um, but I can imagine it so I can try to turn my ideas into visualizations, basically. Um, so, Kira, though, you want to approach it kind of differently, right? That'd be easier for me. Yeah, so that's fine. So what are you thinking? Like, how would you, like, do you have some ideas of, like, something that you'd want to look at? And, and, and um, like, what do you think you want to do? Well, go through my text and 
make some, you know, make a dis uh, basic tiddly wiki out of it and just play around with that and get some ideas. And then I'll probably um, think of some things that I want to mechanize. So what's your text? It's the 9-11 Commission, the Commission on Terrorist. The chapter, right? Yeah. So do you have yeah. that in the tiddly wiki now? No, I, I don't. I've been, um, I've been making the terrorist tiddlers. That's where I am right now. In a spreadsheet. Oh, yeah, I see. What if you just took, instead of automating it, what if you sort of did it by hand? I'd be happier then. Yeah, because that would make sense. I mean, because then you, the, for you, it's the process, it's the art of finding it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so, so let me show you. So open up a, um, did you, do, so yeah, share your screen. You, did, you didn't do the excision exercise, right? No. Yeah. So now let's so do that, but let's use your 9-11 text as the sample. And let's set you up for that. So if you go to the design right, oh, I see. Yeah, let's look at your nine eleven text. You've got you've got that as like an HTML file or something or a TXT file. This thing. Yeah, no, you're, yeah, the, the actual text. Um, no, I don't. It's, it's still online. Is that your hard drive? What? Is that your hard drive cranking, cranking? Uh, I think it's our internet. Oh. No, I thought I heard something. I don't think I hear your internet. Oh. No, that's that would be pretty funny. <laughs> I hear the bits dropping in one by one. <laughs> Big bits. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And what do you you don't do Dropbox, right? But you but you keep your stuff in a do you do Tiddly Spot or Dropbox or you just do Chrome and I can't remember I where just, you do your stuff. I use Dropbox. Oh, I yeah. use Chrome. Okay. So say so save this in um I bet you there's a, yeah, there's probably an internal f file in this. Hmm. Um, but maybe not, just let's, it's fine. Let's just save it and. Could and, save the page or I could grab the text. Yeah, I save the page. Let's see what you get with it. Cause if you grab the text, you'll lose whatever it has. And it might have some, it might have some structure that's useful. Um, but the other thing you could do is you can go back and search Google for we have some planes and there's a TXT file available that's probably cleaner. Let me see if that, let me see if I find, because I remember seeing this. Yeah. Well, you'll, but we can grab the paragraph and we can get you started at some point. So when you get the whole file, but so, so go to the design, right. And, um, and under the, um, um, look at new, you know, go to home and, And the second one under new, maybe the third one under new. No, the fourth one under new. One, yeah, excision tool. Yeah. Slowly loading. Yeah, right, right. Um, 
You went, go back to the design right, because I'm not sure you quite got the right link. Um, you wanted to get your own copy of Tiddly Wiki Pre Release 5.12. You want to click on number two. We're just going to skip step one. Because <laughs> that's just the like review. This is your review. And so you want to save. Yeah, you can go back and do that at some point, but you want to save. Um, Save. Save this. Yeah, there's a probably a hello there. What do you mean? Hey, okay, yeah, you can just you, yeah, there you can. Um, there's probably a download empty in the hello there. You can just save this one too. You know, just like you would anything else. Just save it as a file in Chrome. Yep. And then reopen it. Um, rename it and all that stuff. And so what this does that will work really well for you is uses that excision tool that he demoed for us in the conversation a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And then you can bring the whole text in however you want and just sort of break it apart artfully, not in a plan. And let it, let it go where you want it to go. You know what I mean? Well, that sounds nice. Yeah. And so you can go back to the um, to the nine eleven report. You know, maybe let's go to some other section that I haven't read for a while. You know, just scroll down and grab a paragraph down in like section 1.2 or something like that. Yeah, okay. Um, and I think you could probably figure out ways to, um, you know, move the text around into different chunks as you see fit, you know, and to illustrate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the, um, the, yeah, so go ahead, do that. Yeah, you can blip, right? And the, the trouble at some level with that, I mean, it's not that it's a trouble, but you can also mess with, if you wanted that to be different, then you could, you, then you could run that through a macro. So like, um, so go back to high, I think this will work. So edit high and like do aircraft, just grab commercial, just grab commercial aircraft from the first two. Um, for the like the second, I lost your screen. Yeah, right. And, and then do this with the excision. Oh, oh, copy it. I meant to. Yeah. Right. And then the title is that commercial aircraft. And then instead of replacing it with a transclusion, replace it with a macro. And I don't know if this is going to work. Try macro tag. Hmm. And let's, what did that do? Save that or show it in preview. 
Where's the, where's the preview on this? Um, it's right there. Um, what's the next one over, the eye? Aha. Huh. And you can shoot, yeah. That's kind of, that's, I don't, that's almost right. Is that actually tagged to commercial aircraft now? If you click commercial aircraft, um, does, it take, it, does it take you to this tiddler called commercial aircraft? Yep. Does it have a space? Edit the tiddler title. It looks like it might have a space in front of it. Um, edit the tiddler of commercial aircraft. No space. Good. Okay. So, I, so, so you can play with those kinds of ideas as well, right? Yeah, that looks fun. Yeah, and you can, and, and tags don't have to be small. Tags could be phrases. You know, you might play. I don't know. You know, just be playful with it. Okay. And see what happens if you do this and say, well, for this paragraph, I thought I'd really play with tags. This paragraph, I thought I'd do this, and you know, kind of see what happens so that you. You like paint with a different brush. <laughs> you know what I mean? And just just experiment and see what you can come up with and then and that's um yeah, you know, throw some videos and I don't know. Blink tags and stuff like that. Do you know what the blink tag is? Blink tag? Yeah. No. James, do you think blink still works? Um, I don't know. So edit this text. I don't know if it still works or not, but you can look up the blink tag, but I think put the word in blink in, in the front of any word. It's like some old, really old HTML tag that might still work. Um, oh, that's like marquee scrolling. That's ancient. Yeah, not tag blink, just the word blink in a single, in a, <laughs> yeah, blink. In a single angle bracket, because that signifies it's HTML. Oh. Yeah. And then after the word commuter, put a slash blink. So you can play with all sorts of things. You can probably make, yeah. See if that works. I don't know. It would be terrible if it does. Um, but you could play with all sorts of um, things if you wanted to. It doesn't really, does it? I don't think it did anything. Oh, good. <laughs> but no, you can play with different, you know, colors and stuff like that and have some fun with that. I think that would be great. Yeah. How do you, how do you play with colors? Um, well, you can play with, so Tag Manager, if you've, you've seen Tag Manager. Oh, yeah. You can yeah, color I've that. seen. And if you look, if you go back to Design Right and search for, um, uh, where do I do colors? I don't do much color in Design Right, but... Um, um, you can just Google it and find how to do colors, but you can color any object. You can color the background of a tiddler. You can color text. You can color words. You can color tags. You can, you know, you can do the whole thing and everything can be colors if you want. I'll have to find out how to do that. Yeah. Search for, um, I think it's called top bar. Top bar maybe. Um, all one word. Um, Maybe nav bar. Um, yeah, see that's what happens, you forget. Um, um, I think it's called top bar. <laughs> Run that through an advanced search, top bar. Yeah. Top bar menu. Oh, because it's hidden under core UI. That's why. Um, and so that's where I play with color. So if you edit that, you can see how to set the background color. Ooh. Oh, that's really hard. Div style equals background blue. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you know, so you can play with that stuff and then it's not much to, Learn a little bit, and then you can you can put that pretty much anywhere. So, so yeah. Hey, Steve, is that enough freedom? Is there any more? Is there anything else I could we could any more freedom we could give you? I'm feeling good. Good. Okay. Well, I can't hey, Steve. Come up with. 
Will you bring something on Monday, on Wednesday? Me? Yeah. Sure. Bring a paragraph that's weakified, weakified. I will do that. That's it, yeah. You're going to do like 10 simply weakifications. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hagar, are you had something you were going to jump in with? Yes, yeah, sorry. Just one more thing she might like to look at as well while she's in design, right? Um, okay, do a search for how to apply custom styles by tag. That's a really useful trick. Custom. Yes. Custom styles. Yes, custom styles by tag. Yeah, yeah. Um, search for standard. Just standard? Yeah, click on standard instead of system. You're searching system tiddlers for that. Search on, it's the, it's the area of standard. Yeah, there it is, that one. Okay, I use this to apply colors to the backgrounds of individual tiddlers based on a tag. And I can also do things like apply like a background picture to a tiddler as well, which is quite funky. Oh, nice. okay, that's really nice. Yeah, that's, Jeremy was doing that in his, um... he was showing that in the presentations. He probably said how to do it, but I didn't follow. This is exactly how you do it. Yeah. Um, and he just gave up and made them random just so they'd be different because he didn't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of agree with that. It's just because you want them to be different. Um, so you, so what do you, I see, you just throw that in there and you, you tag. Yeah. So basically the tag name that you're using, if you see um, yeah. in the code box there, he's got dot tc dash tagged. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then after that is the name of the tag that you're using. And then, and then anything that is tagged with that tag will have that CSS code applied to it. Okay. Uh, yeah, see, that's the whole part of controlling the presentation that I haven't explored yet. Um, and so everybody's welcome to that, and that's very cool to do. It's, yeah, if you can do it sort of, that's a cool way to do it. That's good. Yeah. That'll, that'll be more fun. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Have you found audio? Have you figured out how to do audio yet? Sure. Um. I think I got instructions for that last um, okay. meeting. Yeah. And but if that's like too, if that's too weird, then just skip it and just stick with the text. You know, and if you want, if you want to do photographs, that's fine. If you don't, that's also fine. You know, so just pick something that to work with. And if you want to work with just words, that might make a lot of sense. I think everybody just left. Nope, I'm here. Oh, okay. Kira left. Yeah, I think she froze up on us again. Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, okay. Well, I, we all went. Okay. Well, anyway, Kira, I don't know if you're still there, but we'll move on to the next. Um, James, anything that you've got going on? Yes, I'm just working on the framework for uh, my project. You're back. So we moved on from you, Kira. You left and you lost your spot. Is that okay? We were pretty much wrapped, right? Yeah. I'm yeah, good. I guess. Yeah. We're talking about audio. Yeah, yeah. So, James, did you want to share your screen and run through that? Sure. Was there a set of questions or ideas that you were wanted to? Um, I'll show you what I've been doing. Yeah, good. So, basically, this is the home screen that they're going to eventually come to. Um, I took off all the titles because they don't need to know the titles of anything. They're really going to be irrelevant to them. Okay, so your titles are like your image. For the, like, it's a, you're treating title of Tiddler as like a file name. Correct. Okay, so that's, that's very interesting. Um, so you took all the meaning out of title. Yep, and eventually I'm going to take all the tags off the top too so they don't see the tags. Okay. That's a great idea, actually. Yeah, I've, I've, I've also been finding that the title is pretty meaningless now. Well, it's not that it's meaningless, actually. It's annoying. 
<laughs> a caption perspective because it needs to be unique. Yep. Mm. So, and it overwrites, especially if you're importing and exporting. So you overwrite and you don't necessarily want to, but it's mostly that, it means that it's unique. It's the key feeling. So it's not exactly clear why you would want to make your key feel the most visible thing to your readers. Well, yeah. I figured with my photos all being like 001002. Exactly, right. Fine. So what you're doing is a classic database technique and it's, right. and it's, um, so as opposed to Kira. So like to contrast the way that Kira's working and the way that James is working, James is using TiddlyWiki as a, like a database programmer type of person and he's just creating these objects. And, and that, that's sort of the spreadsheet model, kind of, you know, it's a database spreadsheet, however you want to do it. Kira said, no, 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 I, let's just use this as a writing tool, you know? Um, and so she's just going to go from there without structure. So for Tira, uh, for Kira, the titles are going to be really important. You know, so her titles are going to be, are going to have meaning. And so when it shows up, you know, they might be a wiki word or whatever, they have real meaning to her. And for James, those titles are so, they're incredibly important to him, but he doesn't want his readers to even know the titles of his objects because it's like his secret, basically. It's just key. So it's a, it's just such a different approach. And what's weird is that you're both, you're using the same tool um, to, to accomplish, I think, something very similar, but coming at it from diametrically opposed ways. So, cool. So, okay, so we've got these. Um, I think also where, um, where James has hidden his tags, and you were just talking to Kira about how tags can be more than just a single word. They could be a whole phrase. That's also very interesting, the juxtaposition between those two. Yeah, the, the notion of tagging, it's, it's a whole, it's um, Karen Kraus Munson and her thing, which is, she's the one who's doing the uh, photo gallery of photos from the Utica refugee community. Um, and she's working with the tension between a folksonomy and a taxonomy, between tags created by a hierarchical, or, you know, a boss, or a, um, her, and a folksonomy tags created by the readers. Um, and in a sense, this is similar to that. Kira's are not arguing. Kira's grabbing onto the opportunity to create tags on the fly of all different shapes and sizes. And James is drilling down on the necessity to create tags that have very rigorous categorization because it suits the purposes of his audience. Um, yet both activities are tagging. And so there's, there's similarities between those activities. And, and if we can understand how, if there's a cognitive or a, or a, or a knowledge production activity associated with tagging, it should work the same way for Kira as it does for James. And, Maybe, it, maybe if it doesn't, then we'd have to give them different words, right? We'd have to call them different activities, I think. No, it's doing the same exact thing, except my reader doesn't need to know what the tags are. They don't need to know what the titles are. Everything's hidden, so I have full control, so I can tell them where they can go. There it is. <laughs> kind of defeats the purpose of a tiddly wiki, but I'm using it for what I need to be. It doesn't defeat the purpose. There is no purpose to a tiddly wiki. It's like saying it defeats the purpose of Microsoft Word document. Okay. You know. So go ahead. So click on something. What happens? Um, so I got my tabs up here separated in the category. You got your groom. Brings up all the photos that have all the groom in it. Yeah. Um, then the bride, all the photos, and so on. Then it has the bride without the groom. Sorted, what, sorted by what? Um, sorted by the tags. Sorted by the tags? Yep, so bride, any picture with a bride, like this one, it's tagged bride, getting ready, and guest. Because that's what this picture has in common with all three of them. Right. So I'm running it through a list filter for this one, bride without groom. So it's going to show me all the pictures that have bride tagged to it, but not the groom. In what order? Oh, there's no order yet. Yes, there is. Oh, the order that I created them. They're so probably by created date, you think? Right. Okay. It doesn't really matter to my reader what order they're in. 
that all happen on the same day. So right, but it matters to you as a designer. Yep, uh, and to all of us as a designer. And so the um, I just wanted to surface the idea is that there's always a sort. Okay. And so even if the sort is default, it's the default sort. But if you don't know what it is, then um, and the reason for also paying attention to it, and to the extent that you you can, if you can impose a sort order. So in Tidliwiki, a lot of it's just by default, but if you can figure out how to bring it out and put it into your code, yep. and then you can play with sorting it by different things, um, it gives you more power. Yeah. You know, so you want to try to make explicit what's implicit if you can. Um, because then at least you understand as a designer, oh, I have, to, I have to choose a sort order. I shouldn't leave anything to, you know, to chance, right? Because, yeah, okay. So and basically, um, they go up to a photo, they view it, they can click on the thumbs up if they like it, and that puts a tag for a like, or they can click the trash can, and it gets rid of the tag for like. Basically, they're going to click on the photos they want for me to print, then when they save it and send it back to me in my email, I'll go to selected photos to print, and I'll have all the photos that they liked. And if they go through decide, well, I don't like that photo anymore, you can just click the trash can, and now it's not there. Mm -hmm. Cool. So tell me about this tiddler. Okay. Um, Basically, what? it's empty. Yep. It's icy. <laughs> okay, so let's look at it. The title is PIC0013. Okay. okay. It's got three tags. Correct. Yep. Bride, and ready, and guest. It's got a caption. Yep. An event. An event. It's got a link. Okay. And has the code for the photo. Okay, so you wrote that in the spreadsheet. Yeah, so you didn't have to generate it on the. Yeah, I know. It's probably all done in spreadsheets. Yeah. And a status. A status. I'm working on status. Um, I'm gonna try to put it. The so one button does two things. Mm -hmm. Like I could do the tag and do the status at the same time. Because right now, if they look at a photo, once they get rid of the tags, they're not going to know if they liked it or not. So eventually, I'm going to have this button control the status and the tag, and I'm going to have the status pop up down here saying that they liked it. So okay. they know that they already picked it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, um, so that's running through a template? Yep. And the template is called? It is called template. <laughs> Very simple. So right here's all the code for the template right now. So right there's my list filter. That's interesting. I always thought the list filter had to go on the top. No, um, only because I have other stuff I want going on before that. Before what? Because right here, if you look at this, this is the top part that you see. You uh -huh. see the photo, you see the caption. Then on here is the filtering that happens underneath it. This is for every single tiddler in your... Correct. Okay, I see. So this, so if you create a new tiddler, you get all this stuff. Only if it's tagged to certain stuff. Okay. Like, um, I'll show you. This one is not running through a template. So to make it so this doesn't run through the template, I named this one Tag the Table of Contents. And during a template, I have it going to everything except, like right here, it says Table of Contents. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and not yeah. like. Oh, that's like um, you're making spaghetti code, James. <laughs> <laughs> You'd never be able to disentangle it, right? I mean, oh my God, you're gonna look at this in in two weeks and you'll have no idea how it works. Oh no, I didn't exactly know how it works. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I'll never figure it out. Um, so actually, I sort yeah. So at some level, what you'd want to do is you want to have a template for all your photos. You know, and then every photo gets a template. 
and then yeah the for all the photos what's that so this is the template for all the photos yeah but you're creating it by saying well if it's not table of contents yeah <laughs> okay well I, I can do it this way which makes it so i don't have to write more code right this yeah, thing. sure. Anyway, so but it gets the con. I get the concept. So it gives yeah, and then so you're putting it all into the template. So I know if I have to go and change anything, I only have to go to one location. To yep. Change. What's Field Mangler do? Field Mangler. That is the buttons that I created down here. That are these ones right here. Uh huh. So basically, these are the icons that I designed myself and threw them in to look you through the core system. Mm-hmm. And basically, it's saying button message. You're going to add a tag, and the parameter is going to be like, and it's going to send a message to tag it to like and pop it up in tags. I see. Okay. And, and this is the button to delete that tag. Okay. So, yeah, you're getting, so you're writing code. Correct. With like to, to do stuff to tiddlers. Yep. This is um, tiddlywiki code. Yeah, to tag stuff and to, okay, that's very cool. Yeah, and then and you, but it. What I like about this is that I can understand it a little bit, <laughs> you know, and I can get enough to say, oh, there it is. Though it's the like tag. I I just need to change that, and I can steal your code and stuff. Well, eventually, when I get done with it, I'm going to annotate everything in the coding. So if someone does want to go back and look at the code, they'll know what exactly what it's doing. So one way to annotate that would be to, you could use the crit concept that I've been playing with. Yep. Um, and I want to get, there's got to be some debugging stuff out there where you can just turn debugger on or off, you know, or turn annotations on or off with a little checkbox. And then either, cool, very nice. Yeah, that's certainly something that we're going to be doing, Andrew and I, with our project is actually having the crit concept and, and have it so that it can be turned on and off quickly. Yeah, it's pretty much, it's like a debugger, basically. Yeah. Yeah, you want to, because you want to throw all your debug messages in there. Like, I always like to have the name of the template show up in my, when I'm working on a template, so that's easy to find. You know, you bring it, so, because you're back and forth between a template and an object over and over again. But, um, um, yeah. Okay. So, let me, um, so any other questions? I was going to, I've got about five minutes left. <laughs> I have an unrelated question. Yeah, good. Are you not doing undergraduate advising anymore? Oh, I am. I put them all up this afternoon. Oh, I was worried. 8,492 advising appointments up this afternoon. I don't think they've been all taken. <laughs> no, I did it late this afternoon because, yeah, you still came in my office and said, no, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> so they're up there. That's good news. Yeah, okay. Um, mostly on campus, I think. I don't know what got into me. I just was going to be on campus a whole bunch of days. So, But there's a few online if you prefer as well. Okay. So, um, so what I thought I would do, let me share my screen in my few minutes. Am I on screen too? Are we looking at design right here? Did I get the right one? Looks like it. Good. Okay. And um, I thought I would take a um, trip <laughs> through an excision exercise that I haven't seen yet. And um, let's see what we see. Um, so, yeah, so here we go. So this is Kim's, um, and I like the way it opens actually, so I just always kind of, so this is just a walkthrough. So I'll just say whatever comes out of my, into my mind. I like, so it's, okay, here I, you know, look at these five things, perfect. I, I can't really see those. Oh, you can't because, you can't see them at all? I can see the really with the pre-release part. I can see everything. Oh. Oh. Mm, I'm good now. Okay. I made it full screen. Um, and did I see there was something? 
No. Okay. Um, I'm just going to quickly kind of read it. So she's got the text, version one, da, 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 and then we get to see. Okay. So, um, so these are. So these, I first, I don't like these little blue up here. So, hey, God, are you? Still, you have no idea where I am, right? Yeah, I'm in Kim's exercises at the moment. I presume yeah. that's where you are. Yep, you you follow along well. So I'm looking at the first exercise one, and and I would love to figure out a way to. Um, do I still have my? No, I used to have a screen highlighter. Um, make those little blue bars bigger so that they're easier to see. Um, and and then what Kim does is something I think that a bunch of people are finding is that when you have this kind of stretch text, you kind of might want to put it into bullets. So it's just different. But she did all this. She did a really nice job. Um, oh, okay, so here they're all opening at the same time. And that's annoying. I think we've all decided that. Um, not clear. You know, I wonder if there's an if there's a call for being able to click anywhere inside of a paragraph and have the whole thing explode, as opposed to just have one option. You know, so basically, I can click any one of these, and I think I'm accomplishing the exact same thing, right? So there's multiple places to do the same thing. Yeah, I'm seeing here, I'm looking at Kim's code, and it looks like she's used the same state yeah. for every single thing. That's the problem. It's not a problem. It's a, well, let's call it, a, it's a, it, he's exploring. So she realizes yeah. it open in, independently. So it's not a problem. It's the, um, when she goes later, she does, a, she adds the state, and it changes um, or runs it through and figures. So what I like about this is that it focuses our attention to like something like stay. Now it's just being like, I wonder if there would ever be a call for reading along a text and being able to ex expand the whole paragraph. I think not. I can't figure out an, you know, but perhaps, I mean, don't forget this is stretch text could be just as easily be photographs, right? So it could be a movie. It could be a way that you, experience a set of images, you know, opening and closing. So um, when she comes down to version three, I think this is the way that we mostly imagine text, um, where it opens up one at a time. Um, and I think that that's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty cool that you can, that we can do this. Um, so I like the stretch text, thanks Kim for that. Um, and then the reverse engineering, um, Oh, okay. So yeah. So this is. And this does related pop ups. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, so let's look at her code. Um, yeah, so she does like a three step sort of um, a three step appear. That's a pretty cool thing. Um, And I wonder how, you, you know, if you found that you wanted to move this, like if you say that you wanted to, unlike what Kira wants to do, Kira wants to do one off, so she would want to do this one time, right? But if you wanted to mass produce idioms in this way, um, you might break them up. You could imagine running haiku in this way, right? With different lines or something like that. And then you'd write a macro that would treat the different lines or the different portions of a haiku or an idiom the same way. Um, so that would be, so that's a way to sort of mass produce this. That, that's where the reverse engineering idea comes in. Um, so that's cool. Um, and then refactoring. Um, and so I, so yeah, so she took these, this, and I bet you that we're going to see that this is actually transcluded or something, right? That would be our prediction. Um, oh, I see. She just took the whole, the whole common idioms, um, 
So we'll reverse engineer hers. Okay, so yeah, so she took the whole, yeah, so she just took the whole thing and put it out there. Um, yep, that works. Um, this would also be a nice candidate for a peer, obviously, right? So you could sort of click on that and make text come and go, um, make text dance. Um, yeah, so that works perfectly well. Um, that's the refactoring. And um, I'm going to jump to her writing to think. Um, I, so that's worth reading, <laughs> so <laughs> you guys should read that, that's great. Um, I'm gonna open up, I don't think there's any code in here. Um, okay, so this, so, yeah, the funny thing is that in TiddlyWiki, that's the funny kind of, a, I guess it's, this is the code that Jeremy's putting in there as opposed to, um, uh, it's this, I think. Which is wiki markup, right? But instead he chose this. Which I guess you highlight this and bold. Oh, no, he put it in there. How? Oh, wait a second. Well, how did she do this? How did Kim do this? Hi, hi, Shanna. How you doing? So, um, so I think what she that might be your microphone. You might want to mute that for one second. There you go, thanks. Um, so I think what she did is she put the B in, she manually typed in the B slash B, which is kind of funny, and then says she likes the B because she knows she can use the button to bold the text, but she doesn't because she didn't like it because she didn't know the process. But what was funny is that she was using HTML markup to do bolding instead of tiddlywinky markup. So that was that was kind of this is the so when she uses the B, it wasn't actually putting in the code that she thought it was. It was actually putting in wiki markup code. So that's kind of a, I don't know if she did that on purpose or not, but I find that kind of humorous. So if I were playing with that, I would um, along the lines that I'm encouraging Kira to play. I would mark it off that way because that to me is sort of playful. Um, so, um, anyway, so let's wrap that up. Thanks. Um, and Kim, I will kind of put a little bit more thought into this, but maybe I'll just send you a link to this and, um, thank you very much for that exercise. That was lots of fun. I'm not going to save my, uh, changes here and, um, the design right will, and I think it's one of the cable networks that, that finally went away from having commercial breaks at the top of the hour because they found they lost their audience and they say, it's like one of the networks say, and the next show starts right now. So the IDT Hangout starts, well, 